Hi everyone, how are you doing? I am Eric from Lonesome Reader and personally I am quite tired today because uh, last night I stayed up and had an Oscar party which is quite difficult to do in when you live in London because the Oscars are on the west coast of America and they don't actually start until around like 1am our time and then they don't finish obviously for hours until like almost 5 a.m. So uh, it was quite a long old haul but it was really fun particularly at the end with the massive surprise of what happened with the announcement of the best picture. Oh my god that was crazy and uh, everybody was sort of like slumping in their seats falling asleep and like then suddenly that happened and everyone was like what what is going on it was crazy but I was so happy that Moonlight won Best Picture because I loved that movie. I mean I thought there were a lot of great movies listed. It was a really like high lots of high caliber movies. Um, I loved Tony Erdman and uh, I mean I really enjoyed La La Land um, but uh, it wasn't like my best favorite film but uh, I thought Manchester by the Sea was great too. Uh, but Moonlight is a beautiful really special wonderful film. If you haven't seen it go see it. Uh, I just found it so moving. I saw it at the London Film Festival last autumn and uh, and I've been like thinking about it ever since. But before I go to bed this evening uh, I thought it'd be fun to make a video of uh, my book haul for March. Uh, these are some of the books that publishers have very kindly sent me and all of which I'm really excited about reading. Uh, there's 13 in total so uh, I'm just gonna plunge in and start talking about them because I think they all sound really interesting. First is The Witchfinder's Sister by Beth Undertow and this is published by Viking and I was first told about this novel last summer at an event for um, the publishers and it sounded so uh, intriguing and fun. This um, novel set I think in the 1600s or 1700s and it's about a pregnant sister who returns home sort of in shame to her family home and her brother who was once shy with this group of other men they've started hunting witches and keeping names of people in a book who they think are witches and uh, it says on the cover uh, the number of women my brother Matthew killed as far as I can reckon is 106 and uh, I just think it sounds like a really creepy atmospheric historical novel uh, which uh, I think will be a really fun read. Next is Memoirs of a Polar Bear by Yoko Tawada and this is published by Portobello Books and this cover is so cute isn't it? It's just like beautiful and as far as I can make out this is a story of three generations of bears or three different bears and their lives. I think it's narrated from their points of view uh, so you get this idea about their life living in a zoo or living in a circus. So it sounds quite whimsical but um, I'm always intrigued to read more Japanese authors and I was just uh, sucked in by the cover. A Natural by Ross Raisin and this is published by Jonathan Cape and it's uh, I think about a young man, a teenage boy who wants to become a football star and usually I wouldn't be interested at all about reading a a uh, novel that's about sports or about football. But this novel is also about sexuality and uh, I've heard competing things about it. I've heard some really good things uh, like the author John Boyne uh, when I saw him give a reading recently uh, he was talking about how great this novel was. But then there's somebody else I know who um, whose opinions about books I really trust uh, who really didn't like this book. So I keep hearing like competing things like and then I've heard really good things from some other people. So uh, so I'm really eager and interested to read it myself and see what I think. Uh, so I'm uh, hoping to read this soon. Exit West by Mohsen Hamid and this is published by Hamish Hamilton. I haven't read this author's very successful novel The Reluctant Fundamentalist but it's a book that I've always wanted to read and uh, this novel sounds really intriguing and good. Uh, I know that Anna from A Case of Books has read it and really loved it. It's the story of a couple of refugees uh, who meet in a city uh, which is sort of safe at first I think but then becomes increasingly under siege and they have to escape. It's about their journey. So I'm really intrigued by this and Hamish Hamilton always published really great things uh, so uh, eager to read this short novel. The Yellow House by Jorin Blokius. Uh, not sure how you pronounce his name. 
This is published by Holland Park Press. And this is a novel about Vincent van Gogh during his most prolific period of creating artwork. And uh, it is told from his point of view. And so it's a novel that tries to get inside that like artistic mind. And uh, van Gogh, um, like a lot of people, like I just think he's such an intriguing figure. I always think it's interesting when writers try to get inside the minds of visual artists. So I'm really interested to read this novel. Ithaca by Alan McGonigal and this is published by Picador. I heard this author read a few months ago and it sounded really good. It's the story of a boy in Ireland and he doesn't know his father and his mother is uh, somewhat neglectful but he befriends a girl and they start imagining having all these adventures together uh, but then the adventures become a bit more sinister and I think it um, starts to involve some crime. So it sounds like an intriguing story and there's also a string of uh, great quotes on the back of it from authors that I really like. I mean I really love Irish fiction uh, but there's um, really positive quotes from Kevin Barry and Belinda McCain and Donald Ryan. Uh, so uh, yeah, I really want to read this. Ties by Domenico Starnone and uh, this is published by Europa Editions. And what really drew me to this book is that it, it is um, translated by Jhumpa Lahiri, uh, who also wrote an introduction to it and uh, is just really passionate about this Italian author's writing. And the second thing that really drew me into this book is that there is a quote on the back from Jennifer Soon, uh, who wrote Mayumi and the Sea of Happiness, which was a novel I really liked. And she calls it a cleverly crafted psychological thriller. This slim, intimate novel deftly undoes contemporary gender constructions as well as timeless notions of truth, fidelity, and sacrifice. And uh, I just think that makes it sound really intriguing. I think it's the story of a marriage, and so I think it sounds like a good novel about relationships, uh, but also I've always been uh, wanting to read more translated fiction. So I think this will be a great book to explore. Next is a very exciting book, uh, which I'm reading at the moment, and it is uh, This Lincoln in the Bardo by George Saunders. And this is published by Bloomsbury, and it is one of the major literary novels of this year. And I am was quite skeptical at first because um, I've read some of George Saunders' stories, but uh, I never really got like that into them. And uh, but I know he's like massively respected. But I thought I would uh, take a punt on this. And I started it and was just completely confused at first because it's really wild and crazy. But now I'm about halfway through and I'm totally gripped. And I'm not going to talk about it too much uh, because uh, I'll talk about it in my wrap-up video. But just quickly, it's about a night in the life of uh, Abraham Lincoln when his son has died and he goes to the graveyard to mourn him. And it's about his time in the graveyard and all the other spirits of people uh, that inhabit that graveyard and sort of surround his son and Abraham Lincoln. And, uh, and it's this weird confluence of voices. It's wild and crazy and brilliant and I already feel like it is going to be one of my books of the year. You know you get that feeling sometimes when you're just like, like I think this is going to be one of my favorite books of the year and uh, I think this might be one of them. So uh, I'm very excited to finish reading this novel. Spaceman of Bohemia by Jaroslav Kalfor, and this is published by Scepter Books. This is a book that I've been really looking forward to for a long time. Uh, another author like recommended this book to me, Lisa McNerney, uh, and I just think it sounds so great. It's about an astronaut from the Czech Republic who goes into space and sort of comes a national hero. So I think it's going to be an adventurous novel but also really like intellectual, spiritual, and political novel. And it has a really lovely, intriguing uh, cover. Hoffer by Tim Glencross, and this is published by John Murray. Now, when I first saw this book, I looked at the cover, and there's this um, sort of snake type thing, golden snake type thing with a jewel. The subtitle for it is An Amoral Thriller. And just looking at that, I sort of thought like, mm, I don't think this book is for me. It sort of put me off. Uh, but then I turned over the book and what should I see on the back but a big quote from Joyce Carol Oates 
my favorite author. And she says, it is an intricately plotted novel of international intrigue that reads like a wickedly inspired collaboration by the young Evelyn Waugh, Patricia Highsmith, and Martin Amis. His prose glitters like a dagger, propelling us through a maze of deceptions and unexpected revelations. Uh, and so obviously I trust her word. And so I think this will be a really exciting, gripping read. All the Beloved Ghosts by Alison McLeod, and this is published by Bloomsbury. And these are short stories, actually, and I'm, I'm always on the hunt for a book of short stories that I can sort of be reading while I'm uh, on the go, while also reading some other big novels. And sort of the um, summary of it describes them as hovering on the border of life and death, these stories form a ground-shifting collection, taking us into history, literature, and the hidden lives of iconic figures. And I always find it interesting in fiction when authors explore sort of marginalized people from history. So I think this sounds really good, uh, and I really like the cover. The Little Buddhist Monk by Caesar Aria. This is published by And Other Stories, uh, who are such a great publisher. Um, they publish so much exciting fiction. And I read a book by Caesar Aria uh, that they published last year, which was so weird and intriguing. And uh, I sort of like didn't know what to make of it because it was so surreal, but it was really intriguing. Uh, so I'm very interested to read more of his fiction uh, to see if he makes more sense or less sense or the same amount of nonsense. Uh, so, and this is only a very short book, uh, so uh, it'll be another fun taste of uh, this author's writing. And finally, I'm really intrigued to read this non-fiction book called War by Gwen Dyer, and it is published by Periscope Books. Uh, and she is a political journalist, and this is her take on um, uh, recent wars, because there's this sort of like assumption that uh, war is sort of an inevitability when different countries um, clash in their political opinions. And she sort of optimistically argues that war isn't an inevitability. And uh, so uh, I think that sounds very relevant for our times when things are very heated politically and sometimes it seems like war or civil war might be just around the corner. Uh, so it'll be interesting to get this perspective on why it might not have to happen. So those are all books that I'm really excited to read, uh, but which ones spark your interest and which books uh, are you looking forward to reading? Uh, let me know in the comments below. Also let me know if you watched the Oscars and what you thought of the big surprise at the end and what some of uh, your favorite movies were and uh, who you thought was the best dressed. Uh, personally, I loved the way Janelle Monet was dressed. She was just in this great, like, elaborate gown. The other people I was with at the party all thought it was awful and they, like, hated it. But I thought she looked amazing. So I'm gonna drag myself off to bed now. I think it's time I go to bed. Uh, but thank you very much for watching. If you want to hear more of my thoughts about books, please subscribe to my channel. And I'll talk to you soon. Happy reading, everyone.